Hi everybody, we are back with Experiment 11, uh, Part 3. And last we left off with the speaker, I think it was hanging over here, and it was attached off of our uh, put, our, uh, uh, what did that stand for? That standed for our, the, that was the programmable, I think it was programmable unijunction transistor, yes. So, um, since then, what we've done is we have amplified the very um, inaudible sound that was coming out of this guy by adding two stacked uh, 2N quadruple 2 transistors on here. So what we've done is we've daisy-chained the original output. Uh, you know how on the um, put uh, component here we had a, um, what was it, a collector? Oh, I'm sorry, rather not a collector, but a um, anode, a uh, cathode, and a uh, gate pin, if you will. Very similar. It's very hard to keep them straight between those and the uh, uh, transistors, which have the uh, collector, base, and emitter pins. So, what we've done is we've taken the uh, cathode output of our put and routed that to the gate input of our first 2N quadruple 2 transistor. And we powered that guy up with a resistor here and led his output to the base pin of this transistor amplified by um, the output of this transistor. So as you can see what we're doing is we're taking that original really really weak output signal from the put and amplifying it twice. So we're kind of double magnifying it if you will and then routing our speaker um, you know, creating basically a circuit between uh, this is this yellow line is uh, running to, to power, goes through the speaker, goes through the resistor, and essentially creates a circuit through the uh, last uh, transistor in the circuit. And the other thing that I'll note is this speaker that came with my kit, it did not have... Um, wires actually attached to it. It was just the uh, the solder, uh, you know, joints were, not even joints, but uh, solder contacts ready to be soldered to. And so in the previous uh, part two, I had just grabbed wires and kind of used my pliers and bent them around the leads, but it was quite fragile. And since I was moving this thing around, I decided to solder them on this time. And uh, that was my first experiment with soldering. So what I do not recommend, it actually turned out quite well, but what I don't recommend is if you have never soldered before, don't make soldering a speaker <laughs> your first attempt because they are magnetic and will attract your iron. So, you know, you're sitting there trying to hold this speaker steady and and you've got, you know, the, the places you're soldering to, they're not even actually you know, stable on the ground. They're like these little, you know, suspended prongs from the speaker that you're trying to solder to. So very challenging for a first soldering attempt. However, it did turn out pretty well. So anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power on. Since we aren't switch-based, I have to toggle that. And we will see, uh, rather here, just how much louder this is now that we have double amplified the original output of the put. Okay? As you can hear, that's quite loud indeed and quite irritating. So, the only other thing I'll note is when I turn it off, listen to the sound. It's kind of a kind of a cool little sound when it goes off. And I think that has to do with the uh, capacitor running out of juice at the end. So when it runs out, 
it's like the frequency of the sound. Um, I'm not sure if I'm not sure exactly why it elevates, but it seems like it has to do with the drainage of the capacitor as the power is turned off. So yeah, anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. And this wraps up part three. I will be trying part four, um, maybe not today, I'm not sure. These are definitely getting more complicated and require a little bit more study between, uh, between parts. So I hope you enjoyed this and look forward to doing part four.